Greetings everyone, Joseph James here with your nightly newsletter brought to you by the School of Trade.com. Today was August 4th, 2009, a Tuesday here, guys, as we make our way through the month of August. Of course, trying to keep an eye on that light at the end of the tunnel here coming second week of September when we see this fall price action come back. And of course, before we get started, I want to remind you guys we have a free resource online. Go to our YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash School of Trade. Watch those videos. Our nightly newsletters, guys, you know, they recap our entire day of trading. We go over terms of the day, lots of tips and tricks, guys. And make sure when you're there, please take a second of your busy day and rate and comment on those videos. Now, the term of the day today is layers of risk. Now, what does this term mean, layers of risk? Well, I think a lot of you guys can probably guess what it means, but how we use it is to determine or to describe the many different elements that contribute to the risk of a, of a, of a potential trade. So in other words, it's the layers of risk are all the different things going on in the market that could potentially make a, uh, a trade less than what we want to take, right? It makes it a little more risky than we want. And you'll hear me use it when I say uh, the chop zone, slow price action, and the stutter step pattern are too many layers of risk, and therefore, we will avoid this trade. So as we're looking to qualify a trade, we go over our entry rules, right? We use our simple entry rules to identify these layers of risk. And then, of course, we want to avoid the trades with multiple layers of risk and take the trades with no layers of risk, right? Pretty simple, right? Identify what the layers are, and of course, we identify them in our entry rules. We then look to avoid trades that have those multiple layers of risk, such as if we're trading in the chop zone, right, on slow price action. In fact, here are some examples uh, of those different layers of risk, right? So we know the chop zone is the center of a sideways bracket. Slow price action, right, when we don't have the waterfall effect or the follow through on the tape. Uh, the time of day, maybe it's the wrong time of the day to be trading, right, right before the news or right after the news. The location of the trade can be a bad thing if we're trading around a big round number or if we're trading towards the high of the day or the low of the day or around valuary extremes. Okay, so it can definitely be the location of the trade whether or not we have support and resistance levels nearby. So of course, taking a long trade into overhead resistance, that is another layer of risk. And of course, don't forget about the slope of the trigger line. A flat trigger line, as you guys know, will always be another, another layer of risk. And of course, the higher risk two-step setup, as you guys know, if we take a two-step setup, that is another layer of risk because it's a counter trend trade. And of course, when you add that two-step on top of a support and resistance level risk on top of a slow price action layer of risk, then all of a sudden you get a very risky trade. And of course there are lots more guys, so come out and join us tomorrow in our live trade room and ask me to go over the other layers of risk that we look for. We'll go over our entry rules with you guys, and of course the beginner's course is always recommended for free trial members, so make sure you guys pick up a copy of the beginner's course before you get started. We open the room at 2.45 a.m. to trial members and lifetime members. We'll trade the European session at 3 a.m. We'll trade the U.S. session at 9.30 and we'll finish things up at about 12 o'clock. Now, jobs, we have three jobs. Number one is to identify the news and identify the market we see, whether it be a trending or a sideways market. Job number two is then to adjust to those news events and adjust to, our, to, the, to the type of the market we see. So mark our support and resistance levels and define our trade zones. And then, of course, job number three becomes very easy if we do jobs number one and two correctly, and that is to execute our trade. I want to practice patience and discipline to wait for the very best setups. I'm going to stop thinking so much and let my rules do the trading for me. And of course, guys, we're going to give you all those rules as part of your free trial. So come out and join us and learn how to trade right along with us. Now, today, guys, went four for four here in the crude market this morning. Crude was very good to us today. 490 bucks uh, we put in our account today. 490 bucks today. And of course, being four for four here, we got our day started off 8.54 this morning, a two-step long at 45. This, of course, got us plus three, plus six, and plus 25. So the first trade of the day here at 8.54. Now, four for four, 49 ticks in the crude oil, 490 bucks at 10 bucks a tick. So as you can see, we made a good three quarters of that money right here at 8.54. First trade of the day, beautiful trade, 34 ticks. Guys, we managed this thing uh, correctly. We let this thing run on us. And it was a great way to get our day off to a right foot. Now, of course, we had to make our way through the 9 o'clock hour just after 9 o'clock as we, as we move to the right here of your screen at 9.08. This is a two-step short here at 20. This got us three ticks and a scratch. And then keep moving over to 9.15, another two-step here. This, again, on the long side at 11 fill. This, of course, another three-tick scratch. So as you can see here, the slow, choppy price action that we saw here in the euro resulted in 
first trade was a big winner, but the second and third were two very small winners there at three ticks each. What I want you guys to see, though, is, is that notice how we're taking a trade short, then followed right behind with a trade long as it bounces off this bracket bottom. So it doesn't matter what direction we're trading, guys. A sideways market, we look forward to sideways trading because it gives us potential opportunities like these all day long. And we'll show you guys how it finished up here in the crude. So, of course, we finished up here 10.55 at a two-step long at 29. So at just before 11 o'clock, this two-step long, Phil here was at 29. We got plus three, plus six for the nine ticks. So that shows you guys how we got to our 49 ticks there for the day here on the crude oil. Now, of course, we finished up our day here at 11 o'clock because this particular trade at 10.55, it was quickly showing what we call in the room crude being crude. And as you guys know, if you're a crude oil trader, you know that the crude market has a definite and distinctive personality to it. And oftentimes, we can trade without having to deal with that personality, but it seemed like after 10.30 this morning, we were dealing with lots of, uh, you know, boy, kind of half-qualified setups. We never really got the entry strength we were looking for. A lot of one tick down, four ticks back up, three ticks back down, five ticks back up. So it seemed like we were constantly battling the price action after about 10.30 this morning on crude. If you guys were here with us live in the room this morning, you guys saw what I was talking about. One tick up, three ticks down. Right, It makes it very difficult, obviously, to be a breakout trader or to take a counter trend, trend continuation trade. So, of course, at 10.55, what happened here was got long at 29, but if you guys are with us in the room, you watched as my price literally blew right through my entry, then came right back, filled me, because our trap order was still in the market, filled my first two targets, and then bounced me out with my stop. It was within literally a fraction of a second, and it was at that point we realized, okay, 11 o'clock, Time to sit on our hands, time to protect this capital we've made already today because the crude market was beginning to get pretty darn sloppy on us here after about 10.30. And this 10.55 trade really solidified that for me. And, of course, we shared that in the room about what we look at uh, to know that sometimes the market's going to start acting up on us late in the morning, maybe early in the morning. Whenever it does, we identify it and we, of course, adjust accordingly. So we used a little bit more patience there not to try to force any trades because we saw the price action was really getting sloppy after 10.30. All right, guys, so that's it. 490 today, four for four there on the crew. That brings our total monthly totals, guys, to 550. So we're working our way through here, here, here through the month of August. And as you guys know, the live trade room opens up tomorrow morning, 2.45 a.m. Eastern time. So make sure you come out and join us. We'll trade eight different markets. We'll have live calls with entries, targets, and stops. Come out and see our exact entries, where our targets are, where our stops are. We'll show you guys how we manage our trades. Plenty of, plenty of opportunities for questions, guys. So bring your questions with you. There'll be education all day. Guys, after your free three-week trial, I promise you're going to see the market in a completely different way, so make sure you come out and join us. Remember, the beginner's course is recommended for all free trial members, and please rate and comment on our YouTube videos. Drop us an email, sales at schooloftrade.com. My name is Joseph James. Hope the video helps. We'll see you tomorrow morning in the trade room. Don't forget, opens up at 2.45 a.m. Let's get ready to take some trades. We'll see you then.